Okay, I'm going to show how to do histogram equalization by hand, or essentially not using MATLAB's built-in function. So the procedure is to uh, start with the histogram of the image. Let's say it goes from 0 to L minus 1, the values. We'll divide by the total number of pixels to get a PDF. We'll then uh, calculate the CDF by summing the PDF and we'll multiply by L minus 1 to get our transformation function. And then uh, we can go ahead and apply that transformation to compute the output values. So here's an example of a simple histogram. In this case uh, we have a 64 by 64 image so we've got 4096 values. Um, here's the values here. The we have the possible values range from 0 to 7. There are three bits. So this is kind of what the histogram looks like. Okay, so I find that Excel actually is a useful tool for problems like this. Um, I've entered the values of the histogram as shown here. As you can see, they sum to 4096. Now I'll go ahead and compute the PDF so at each cell I type the formula which is uh, equal this cell divided by the total. So and then I'll copy that but before I do that I want to make the cell I'm dividing by absolute by using uh, these dollar signs. So then I can go ahead and copy and paste all of those values. I can also compute the sum of these values just to make sure that sums to 1 as it should. As far as the CDF, um, so the CDF remember is the cumulative sum so I start with um, that and then each cell is it, the that current value of PDF plus the previous value of the CDF. So I just keep, I just copy and paste all of those. And as you can see, um, the last value is a 1, as it should be. So finally, I can compute the transformation function, T of R. Whoops. Which is just the um, CDF times well, the value is 7 in this case. That would be my maximum value. Um, you'll notice that it's a fractional value, and I, I, I don't really want a fractional value. I want an integer. So I'll use Excel's round function, which says I want to round a number. Number of digits after the decimal point is 0. So that rounds to a 1. And I'll just copy and paste and that's my transformation here. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and calculate the histogram of the output image. So we, although I don't, I, I haven't really applied it to an output image, I can still calculate its histogram. So what I'm going to do here is um, take all possible values of s and then for example let's say um, I don't know for values of s where s is equal to 1 those came from input values looking at this table where um, r, the r was 0 so r 0 mapped to an s of 1 and I had 790 values of those so I should, I should see in my output histogram 790 for that value. Um, so another example might be um, 6. So if I look at the values 6 in the output image, those came from a 3 and a 4 from the input. So both of these contributed, which means I have a total of 656, plus 329, which is uh, 985. We can actually 
use Excel to do this too. Um, there's a function called SUMIF. So let me create my output table. And this is going to be my histogram here. Okay, so I type sum if. So the the range I'm going to test is um, uh, this here. So the uh, transformation table here is what I'm testing, and I'm testing to see if it equals this particular value of s. So if any of these equal 0, then I want to sum the corresponding values from this range right here. Okay. So that's a 0 because there were no values of 0 in the output image because nothing produced that. So I can go ahead and copy that, but before I do that, let me make um, these ranges um, absolute. And then I should be able to just copy that. OK, so as you can see, we, um, we got the value we expected here, this 985 for a 6. There's my 790 for a 1. The sum should again equal the 4096, and it does. Um, here's an example. You can do this. This is so easy. You can do it by hand. Um, we want to compute the um, transformation function for this. So first of all, we sum the values here, and we get uh, 100. So the probability of each value of r, we simply divide h by 100. So we get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. The um, CDF, we simply do a cumulative sum. So that's 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 1. So that uh, we can take by just we can just multiply by uh, our seven here to get our transformation function. So seven times zero is a zero, zero zero. Seven times point one is a point seven. We round off to a one. Seven times point three is a two point one. We round off to two and so forth. So that gives us this table here. So that's our transformation function that will equalize the histogram. Um, estimating the output histogram, same way we did before, um, we can see that a 1 in the output is produced by this 3 in the input, so I have 10 of those. A 2 in the output is produced by a 4 in the input. I have 20 of those. That guy's a 0, 0. This guy's a 40. That one's a 20. And that one's a 10. OK, finally, um, just an improvement on the adaptive, I'm sorry, the histogram equalization is to make it uh, local or adaptive. So the uh, regular histogram equalization is a global method, meaning it applies the same transformation to every pixel in the image. However, if your image differs in contrast from one region to another, we can take that into account by applying histogram equalization on each region. Um, and to avoid blocky appearance, we can make tiles overlapping or interpolate across tiles. So MATLAB has a function adapt hist eq, which um, which does this, um, uses 8 by 8 tiles by default. So on that same image, we go ahead and run that. Um, let's see here. 
Okay, so that was my input, if you recall. Um, this was the regular um, histogram equalization. And now I will do um, adaptive histogram equalization. So this one is much better than the other two. So as you can see, we have plenty of detail in the background area, um, but the um, area on the plane here is, is not completely washed out or blackened as it was on the regular histogram equalization. In summary, Gray level transformations map each input intensity value to an output intensity value. We can use these transformations to improve the contrast in an image. And why is it desirable to have a flat histogram in the output image?